Hi, and welcome. Welcome to The Butter Dish. We are going to talk to you today about um, some of the things that can uh, go sideways on us when we hit some bumps in the road and all of a sudden we're eating a wonderful carnivore diet and we feel bored. What do we do? How do we handle this? So we're just going to hear here to talk about those issues and what we've noticed in our own life and um, our carnivore journeys and how um, it, hopefully some of these tips will help you too. Yes. So our experiences, how did we start? That's a good thing because we, I think like many who just started, you don't even know what, where to start. So, um, so how did you start in that? Variety. I actually just started with one ribeye. I was just so happy that I bought the first, very first ribeye. I didn't even what? buy anything. Why did you buy a ribeye first? I didn't know about ribeyes. I didn't, I didn't know about all of this till much it later. In my it was Bella's video of her two ribeyes. She was just munching on those ribeyes and like, oh, I want that. So I, I, I went and bought a ribeye straight away. That was my very first uh, carnivore food in at least 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> what was the, do you know the month, the day, the year? I'm just curious. Yep. First of May. Oh, it, it, was <laughs> it was 2020 and it was May 1st yeah. and you had how many replies did you have it was just one because I was pretty well still scared because I wasn't eating at all those uh, months before or those years before yes, so I was yes. just worried about if if I would even like it or eat it or even finish it but I ate the whole thing and I was it was like you know taking that first bite it was like oh where were you all these years? <laughs> oh, I was in bliss. Yeah, with a very first, and I and I couldn't. The next day, I bought two. So, <laughs> how long did you read about it and learn about it and watch videos until you actually did it and took the plunge? Um, I think I, I actually plunged into fasting first because um, I was actually looking to see if the non-eating part that I was doing, that was actually not recommended uh was was good or healthy what i was doing and then of course fasting came up yeah so uh doc and that's when i learned about dr fun about not not looking at calories but at hormones mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there was this um i talked to saw G georgia eat who talked about brain health mental issues mm -hmm. and she i think about eating disorders as well mm. all of a sudden yeah bella popped up on the side of youtube <gasps> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah oh my she goodness she does that every now and again she just yeah, pops she just, up she just pops <laughs> up. Right I'm so glad she does mm -hmm. because I, I think that's when I when she said about the 30-day challenge I think it just kind of popped up on my Instagram or something just mm -hmm. kind of randomly and I was like well I could use a challenge sure challenge <laughs> me I don't know why not yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So you started with your ribeye and then how did the variety, did you ever get bored or did you just. Uh, no, I didn't because it, since it was just uh, discovering everything new the next, uh, every single day. Yeah. Even, uh, and I hadn't had pork. I, I never had tried, tried pork because, um, uh, because of my mom's religion. So we didn't, we didn't have pork at home. And I, that was one of the first things I wanted to try. I was to see what I want to know what pork finally tastes like. And it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you did, you were, side. You <laughs> no. were, I know pork is powerful. Pork yeah. is powerful. We should, that should be a slogan. Um, yeah. You said that you, when you started, you, you did do variety. So yes. how was that? Yeah, that was good. That was that what that really helped me to eat more. Like you said, I needed all those little sides and I, I, I wasn't uh, I was just scared of the big amount. So I would just start off with, you know, just one ribeye and then have a few chicken wings and have a few eggs. And later on that went the the amount went uh, um how do you say it? Uh, became larger. Mm -hmm. But it started off with small, tiny amounts, but the variety needed to go be there just to even just to have enough food just to get enough food in I see I see wow. it wasn't like a mental thing like for me I wanted to look at my plate and I wanted it to look a certain way did you have that that mindset too did you want to look down and have separate textures and things like that or it was just no because I was eat enough just eat enough yeah mm -hmm. and maybe just a mental thing of just not having a large amount of something so just you know little tiny dishes so yeah Amazing tip. Under eating is uh, the number one mistake when people are starting the carnivore diet. 
And so this variety is, you know, the answer, I think, to think about the carnivore foods that you love to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of under eating. Of course, in the gang, we are so adamant about teaching feasting and priming. And, you know, we teach uh, against under eating right from the get go. So I think it'd be hard to be an active member of our group and to not realize that under eating is an issue for a lot of people. <laughs> so I do feel, I feel thankful for that. Yeah. So I have a question for a deck because a deck you do lion diet now. So you're I primarily do. red meats, ruminant mm -hmm. meats. So That's for somebody who has really pared down their variety now to more of a mono diet, mm -hmm. how do you keep from getting bored? Do you prep it in a different way? What's your strategy there? I do. I do. Uh, but uh, even that has become more boring and easy because I love just being, you know, just being able to throw the steaks in the air fryer and it's done in, a, in one or two minutes. Yes. And I do have an Instapot as well for my oxtails and broth. Mm. So I do, uh, I do love it when it's, the texture is a difference. And now I even eat raw, which is another texture, another in another way, in another uh, variety to add to the lion diet. Yeah, so I rely on textures and flavors and how I cook it now. And um, even then, even then the, the, the steaks feel, taste different because I think um, your taste buds change and you actually just taste the different cuts did the different cows as well because on monday there's a every every other day the butcher slaughters a cow so it's fresh meat mm. and even monday and wednesday the the, the, the meats oh. taste different uh, my recent um shift that i'm doing for my ribeyes is freezer to air fryer so you've always talked about you know farm to table or you know this and so i have a freezer to air fryer fryer <laughs> life right now as do my children they know how to do it too we just go grab our stuff from the freezer swap it in the air fryer we're good to go so i get variety in my actual ribeye of mm -hmm. the inside is nice and rare and even cold and yeah. i get the the caramely salty outside crispy and so I had never considered the variety that in one cut of steak, you could actually have some variety. That's true. Or the different cows. That's what I'm fascinated by because I've, I've been educating myself about the different cuts. But when you say different cows, you know, we all know about the Wagyu cow, like they're massaged and they're yep. fed like beer or something like that. And mm -hmm. they're, they're pampered their whole lives. But when we talk about uh, Angus versus, a, you know, I don't know. I don't even know all the names of these cows. Oh, we talk about all these different types of beef cows, mm -hmm. you know, to even know that and know that they have different flavor, different texture, different. That's amazing. So yeah. what's your favorite cow? <laughs> <laughs> no, Friday cow. No, <laughs> Friday cow. I love it. Some people have days of the week underwear. We have days of the week beef. <laughs> Wonderful. So, Cherish, how did you start with your with your carnival journey? Well, I was keto first, so then you know I had seen, similar to what you guys. I saw Bella in the challenge, and I was not keto was no longer serving me well. So, I decided to give it a try. And I was watching Bella's videos, you know, every day. Her egg pudding was one that I stepped into and absolutely love, still love it to this day, will always love it. I don't foresee myself ever stopping eating it unless I try doing a beef only month or something like that. I just love it too much. Um, and then the ribeyes, when she cut up her own ribeyes, that intrigued me. So going to Costco, I still do that to this day. You know, if I'm running low on meat, we'll go to Costco, we'll get a rib roast and we'll cut up the steaks. And the ribeye cap also. Mm. She bought those ribeye caps from Costco. It's one of the, it's very expensive, but it's totally worth it. So the good. top part that, that Emily's talking about uh -huh. yes. is the cap. Yes. And the butchers take that for those that don't know, some people might be aware, but they take that top part of the ribeye and then they just take a bunch of them and they string them together. That's yeah. what I want for my birthday dinner. I want the cap. <laughs> Usually two or three of them to make a big juicy cap. 
Mm-hmm. And then you just, you sear it. You can either cook it first and reverse sear it, or sear it first and stick it in the oven. Mm-hmm. Either way, doesn't matter. All delicious, right? Mm. Amazing. Yeah. So for me, what keeps me from getting bored is I try to prepare it different ways. Like I have sous vide, I have grilled, I have broilered, I have baked, I have pan seared, reverse seared. I've tried different cuts. I know now I've gotten to the point where, and I think everybody gets to this point, you know what you really like and what you really don't enjoy. So I'm not a huge fan of anything that is below like leg. Like I don't do the shank. I do not like the shank. It's too tough for me. I don't like it. I like the nice tender loins. Mm -hmm. So anything that's coming off the top of that cow and it's not worked as hard. Oh, that's a good one. Love that. Love it. Love it. Anything that's got a lot of fat in it, I love it. But I did learn the hard way that one has to balance that much fat or one is going to wind up in in the bathroom frequently. Oh, Um, mm -hmm. When I do ribeyes, especially big fatty ones, or if I do a cap, and if the cap doesn't satisfy me, it used to be where I could barely finish a ribeye cap. Now I can finish a ribeye cap and still have a little bit of room for a little more. <laughs> so if I don't do eggs or something or bacon, then I will go ahead and have another steak. Um, but I'll do a leaner steak, like a filet, you know, where it has absolutely like no, little to no fat. Yeah, true. And that helps keep me balanced and they're different flavors and textures. And even though I just make it with salt, it still tastes different. And Deck, I think you're onto something. There's probably something with the various cows, you know, the sourcing of my meat comes from places like Butcher Box, our local butcher, our local store. So I'm probably getting a variety of cow and just don't realize it. Yes. (laughs) You know. And I know that you enjoy seafood as well now still, don't you? Yeah, that's my latest thing, right? Yeah. Is to incorporate mm. seafood. I'm actually going to be doing a video reviewing our local seafood place, which I literally could have lived and died in. <laughs> because they had the most delicious crab and lobster I have ever mm. had the pleasure of eating. It was all steamed. So no bad oils, cooked in just water, and was just super delicious. Oh, so, yeah. Sounds incredible. Wow. Yeah, just trying different things, you know, that I did not like sardines when I was keto. I had choked them down because I was suffering from an injury and it was like, okay, I know I need to get calcium in my body and I'm not going to take a supplement because I know it's, I'm just going to pee it out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw some obey on these sardines and try and choke them down. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked, but now for some reason my tastes have completely changed and now sardines and water actually taste really good to me oh, so oh good. nice nice yeah. that's what i love i think anytime we're just kind of forcing ourselves to eat something it actually doesn't end up satisfying us very much and oh, you're yeah. actually even though maybe your appetite went down or something like that even on carnivore foods if you're kind of making yourself eat stuff that you don't really love Mm -hmm. then I think you're still going to end up craving a little bit. So, Oh yeah. If it's not Mm -hmm. satisfied, I would Mm -hmm. actually go back to the stores or something and just buy and get some more, just what I do like. Yes. It doesn't fulfill me that day. Oh my goodness. Yes. And then when I thought where you before you were beef centric. Sure. Sure. Oh, thank you. You used my word. Um, Yeah. I, and I was not beef centric from the beginning. I, that came much later. That wasn't until I, and actually I was lamb centric was what I started with. And then I realized how satiating, how satisfying the ruminant meat was. And then I started really leaning into the beef just for more of the satisfaction because there was nothing else that could like stay with me and keep me satisfied for longer. So I just figured there was something really, really good that it was doing for me. It never triggered me to have more cravings and more hungry. It's just like, now you're satisfied. So before, when I first started, I didn't even know that cheese was something to be on the lookout for. So I'm kind of glad I didn't know that because I I used a ton of cheese, uh, cream cheese, sour cream. 
I had too much. I, I overdid it with that stuff. So I was still having a dietary diet mindset. I had a diet mindset my first, I would say six months in the carnivore lifestyle. I was still very much diet mentality. Um, so I just did, I loved it though. I, and I felt so good. So even though I was still having some struggles and I wasn't quite dialing it in, everything had turned around for me so much with my mentality, my energy, my sleep, all of that stuff was getting a thousand percent improved. So I knew I was doing something good. Um, but I absolutely insisted on variety. So I would make a plate and I would have different textures, different colors, um, different shapes. So I just had to be like a smorgasbord. It's kind of a smaller amount. I, I assume when I think back, I was probably under eating a little bit. Um, but yeah, I would have a little bit of shrimp. I always had shrimp available as a little tiny side dipped in butter. Um, almost always some chicken wings. Uh, always some cheese, some little slice of cheese or something. Um, usually a little bit of sour cream got on there as well. So yeah, I just kind of really mixed it up. And I think that that was what I needed. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can look at that. And I think, well, I wish I knew what I knew, but I didn't know what I didn't know. So for that time in life, just kind of winging it on my own and basing my life off of pictures I saw on Instagram and what they were, what I saw on their plate, I'm like, okay, I'll try to make that. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out to be a pretty good beginning. So then I went beef only, but part of my journey was that I heard about this thing called BBBE, which is a uh, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I believe the berries had put that out there in, into our world. Um, and that was really good when I needed variety from lion diet. Lion diet was amazing. I felt so good. I got amazing recomp. I absolutely detached from food. Um, I did start craving more. And so when, when I kind of kept it, I opened up my categories, but so now I'm mostly BBBE. I go off of that a little bit, but my staples absolutely, absolutely are buttery eggs, bacon, beef, and just plain butter. So I, I eat my butter discs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> For beginners, I wish that I had known to feast, but I did know to use variety.